and let's talk about SQL Server concurrency. Today in part one, what are your takeaways? This webinar, this content for next 45 minutes is going to be very short and very crisp. And there is a reason behind this. And the reason why I chose this topic today is because in day-to-day -day customer engagements, I still see that developers and DBAs do not have a very good thorough understanding of isolation levels in SQL Server. And um, I just can't term the top, uh, topic as isolation level. So I chose the broader topic, which is concurrency. And everything is all good when we talk about read uncommitted isolation level or read committed isolation level. But things start getting a bit trickier when you jump over to isolation levels like repeatable read and serializable. And then there are, and, and, and just a few days back, I came across a scenario where uh, a business requirement had to be achieved and the developers were struggling as to how to achieve that business requirement. It's, it's something like, uh, let's put it in, uh, in, uh, in a, let's paraphrase this. So let's say you are developing an online, um, you know, a air ticket reservation system and uh, the passenger who wants to book a ticket is choosing a specific uh, sector and route. And there is a price, uh, the airfare is shown on the screen. And from the point the passenger decides to book that ticket, you know, that price should be frozen until the credit card payment is successful. So that may take about five minutes or 10 minutes or maybe even 15 minutes. And you want to reserve that price for the passenger. You know, things like that, how do you achieve those kind of uh, business scenarios? Because you know, in airline reservation system, you know, the ticket prices are fluctuating. So there are limited amount of tickets in a specific quota or in a price range. So while the user is browsing and just taking its, his own sweet time, someone else comes and books um, two more tickets uh, for that sector for that day. And the quota might be over. And suddenly the passenger is surprised when, uh, when they want to make the payment, they see the price has gone up and it's not uh, reserved. So, I mean, and I'm just giving you a very wild uh, kind of scenario, but the whole idea is that that is kind of easily achieve achievable if you play around with isolation levels. There are many other ways how you can do that, but then yes, isolation levels need to be really understood well, irrespective of whichever capacity you are working in. Now, the isolation levels in SQL Server, read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, and serializable. I know the moment I talk about these four isolation levels, you're going to say, oh, there is a fifth one also, which is snapshot. Yes, there is snapshot isolation level. And there is a, uh, there is a optimistic version of read committed, which is also called as read committed snapshot. All that is going to come in part two. In part one today, I am going to talk about these four isolation levels, which have been with SQL Server from, from many, many, many years. Each isolation level is designed to solve a concurrency problem. I see so many videos and so many tutorials and you know the blog post, et cetera, which straight away jump into talking about isolation levels. But before you talk about isolation levels, you need to understand the concurrency problem that they are trying to solve. So if you see the demos that I was, I have put up here, which is actually from uh, our fast track video course, um, dirty read, non-repeatable read and phantom read. These are the three isolation, uh, the concurrency problems that we are going to talk about and then how SQL Server isolation levels are going to solve these problems. There are more, there are problems like double read, et cetera, et cetera, but like, let's not talk about those edge cases. These are the common ones that you come across in most application. So let's get started with the first one, which is a dirty read problem. And as and we, when we start with dirty read, et cetera, this is going to be very basic, but the moment we move into repeatable read and serializable, things will get uh, trickier and more interesting. So we have a database here called SQL Maestros. I'm going to use that database. And I've put in a lot of notes and we'll share these scripts also with you so that you could try them um, at your own convenience. Just pay attention to the demos now. So I'm going to drop this table dummy.subscribers if it exists. Okay, we have done that. 
and uh, now let's prepare the data so we have a table here called actual subscribers that stands for our hands on labs and we get them into dummy dot subscribers let's quickly create the table let's query the data we are going to select from this subscribers table where the subscriber id is 212 let's go and execute this and you will see subscriber id 212 and the name is ron villes okay that's the name now we are going to simulate two users in other words two connections connection 1 and connection 2 let's do that so i'm going to create a new query window let's call this as connection 1 and one more query window let's call this as connection 2 or let's do one thing let's call this one as connection 1 and this one as connection 2 from left to right so what are we doing in connection 1 in connection 1 let's copy this okay and put it here in connection one we are going to start a transaction but we will not commit it so no roll back no commit and the isolation level is read committed here which is the default right so let's start a transaction begin a transaction and you know the default isolation level in sql server is read committed so you have the lowest isolation level which is read uncommitted then comes read committed then repeatable read and then serializable that's the order i promised i am not going to use any powerpoint slides so i'm talking more instead of putting up slides the moment we get into slides you know we lose demo time and that's why i just want to keep it to demos now we are in read committed this connection one is in read committed so we are going to update this table and we are going to set the name as john for subscriber id 22 right now this is uh, ron velez as you know so let's go and update we are going to update and it says one row affected remember this is an in flight transaction what do you mean by an in flight transaction a transaction that is in progress we have done the change but neither have we committed nor have we rolled back so this is an in flight transaction now what are we doing in connection 2 so let's take this code and put it into connection 2 so in connection 2 isolation level is read uncommitted so we are going to use sql maestros that's already there we are purposely changing the isolation level to read uncommitted now default as you know is read committed but we are starting off with read uncommitted now for whatever reason we are changing the isolation level to the lowest isolation level the first one look at the name of the isolation level it says read uncommitted simply means in this isolation level you will be allowed to read uncommitted data data that is not committed and uh, if you do this and execute so we change the isolation level and now let's fire our select statement okay in the chat window what will you get will you get john or will you get ron velez let's see everyone okay all of you are paying attention thank you so much okay yes we are going to get john let's go and execute this and we get john so this is dirty read this is the concurrency problem the reading of this data is a dirty read operation in front of you and we call this as a dirty read simply because this data that is being read by user 2 connection 2 is neither committed nor roll back i mean this is not committed data and that's why this is a dirty read problem that can happen in read uncommitted isolation level friends this is equivalent to using the no lock hint and the read uncommitted hint and i'm sure no lock is very popular in sql server world we sometimes put no lock hint in a lot of those select statements that are doing a lot of grouping and aggregations etc trying to create analytical reports and you don't want them to be to get blocked uh so we term sometimes just want to ignore those uh, records and just pick up whatever data we can get so that they just run uh, without any hindrance so read uncommitted isolation level is equivalent to no lock hint or read uncommitted hint they're all the same so we are reading the dirty data here okay friends uh, you know this topic is such a topic concurrency and isolation levels that your questions need to get answered the moment you ask them because this is very transactional in nature very transactional in behavior so I'll make an exception for this webinar. While the demos are going on, if you have questions because there's something happening in action and you might be thinking, so feel free to ask your questions, and I will still encourage that you use the Q and A panel, please. Uh, otherwise, the chat window is just going to get very noisy. 
So what we will get in connection one, okay, John, okay, we have, uh, okay, so the question is, what are we going to get in connection one? Okay, interesting. What are we going to get in connection one? In connection two, we get uh, John. Anyone, what are we going to get in connection one? That's the question. Guys, okay, and girls and everybody else, sorry, yeah. Also, John, let's go and execute this. Of course, you are reading the data in the connection where you have updated it. So, of course, you're going to get John. Okay, but then we have tested it also now. Fair enough. Okay, good. I hope this was very, very straightforward and fairly simple. So, now the point is let's proceed. So, issue a rollback from connection one. Now this was an in-flight transaction and this is the whole problem of dirty read, right? So let's go and roll back this transaction. Let's go and execute. This transaction is rolled back. And if you jump over to connection two now, this is where the problem is, right? Now, if you go and read this data earlier, you got John, but now that uncommitted data is gone and you are back to Ron Vellis. Dirty reads. Dirty reads are not acceptable really in uh, in many, many business applications. And I mean, all of you know that very well. And that's why we have the default isolation level, which is read committed. Now, before we come to read committed, let's talk about the concurrency behavior, the human behavior here. So what just happened was in read uncommitted isolation level, what you need to know is writers did not block the readers. Always keep this in mind. Writers did not block the readers. Writers do not block readers in read committed isolation level. Connection one was the writer. There was an update statement. In-flight transaction was going on. I have not talked about the locks that were taken, exclusive locks on shared locks. I just don't want to get into the technical depth of lock modes and lock resources and lock requests, etc. I just want to keep it very simple, right? So you had connection one uh, that was... Um, uh, an in-flight transaction and the data was of course logged and uh, writer. So this is connection one is the writer. Connection two is the reader and in uncommitted isolation level, writers are not blocking readers. Okay, this keep this in mind. So Hitesh has a question. What if connection one not committed and in section three, you update uh, to and in section three, I didn't understand what is meant by section three. You update Amit, uh, to Amit and not commit in section two will get John or Amit. So, you know, now there are, there are a lot of these questions that I'm going to get from you, which is like, what if scenarios, okay, you start a new connection. I think by section three, you mean, if you start a new connection, you fire another update, et cetera, et cetera, go and try this out, right? Go and try this out. Think about this because then you got to get into a more technical depth. Here comes this concept of lock modes and lock compatibility, because when you are uh, doing this stuff in uh, read uh, uncommitted, the type of lock that is being taken is a shared lock. So are exclusive and shared locks compatible in read uncommitted, right? So in read uncommitted isolation level, locks that are taken are completely ignored. And that's why you're able to read dirty data you're able to read the data on which there is an exclusive lock. But then if you start off another connection and you try to update the same data, which is already under exclusive lock, will SQL Server allow that to X locks? You got to try that, right? They will be incompatible, right? So this is what you got to think in terms. So friends, what if scenarios, um, you know, let's try to avoid because then there will be too many what if scenarios starting a third connection and a fourth connection, etc. Okay, so... That was read uncommitted. Now let's jump over back to the code and um, let's repeat the same procedure now this time. And we are going to do this in read committed isolation level. So we'll move one level up because we want to avoid the dirty read problem. So if I look at the code, this code looks very familiar. So I'm just going to make changes here. So we rolled back, right? We did that. Okay. Now we are going to update this again. Let's begin the transaction. We are going to update this to John. We do that. And now in connection to, I'm going to change the transaction isolation level to read committed. Okay. Which is going to be default. So you don't re really need to type this down uh, or specify this, but because we're using the same connection and it was earlier changed to 
uncommitted i'm changing it back to committed which is the default okay so i'm just going to call this out this is the default always now i'm going to execute this what do you expect friends in read committed isolation level now if i fire a select statement and i want to read subscriber id 212 what is it going what's going to happen 